participants in participatory local governance project. The importance of peer review as a tool to improve performance, maintain quality of standards, and improve credibility in organizations cannot be overemphasized. It is therefore not surprising that even the African Union has also decided to adopt it as a tool to improve governance. And I'm proud to say that the Republic of Ghana was one of the countries that was uh, peer reviewed uh, first. This workshop hosted by Galga is also funded by the European Union under a program facilitated in three countries, namely the Gambia, Ghana and Zimbabwe. Mr. Chairman, allow me to thank the European Union for the financial support. Allow me also to thank Galga for hosting the esteemed delegates over the next two days. And all delegates for the commitment and enthusiasm without which the successes so far scored would not have been realized. In the Gambia, the project was launched by the Ministry of Lands and Regional Government on May 30, 2011, giving energy to the scheme seeking to support transnational trading among the three ECOWAS states. Today, we are gathered here to look at the national good governance indicators from the three partner countries, namely Ghana, Zimbabwe, and the Gambia, with a view to harmonizing them to a regional good governance indicators and to draw lessons and good practices. The significance of good governance was the main trust of the statement delivered by the representative from the Ministry of Local Governments and Lands at the luncheon event. The just concluded national consensus building workshop on good governance indicators has harmonized all indicators identified by the five participating councils into, national, into a national indicators of good governance. Good governance shaping the picture of regional administration is certainly one process greatly indispensable towards advancing progressive development. This program harnessing national and sub-regional resources to propel this vital drive could be a defining move injecting fresh life into local governance. Ibrahim Jata, GRTS. The sixth session of the Joint Commission between the Government of the Republic of the Gambia and the Government of the Republic of Senegal starts at the Caraba Beach Hotel. The opening was presided over by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Susan Wafa Ogu, and here is an excerpt from her statement. He is aware that our two presidents, the President of the Republic of the Gambia and the President of the Republic of Senegal, were resolved from the get-go to ensure that the fraternal bonds, the kinship ties that link the Gambia and Senegal are cemented in ensuring that the people, whether they are officials or whether it's a people-to-people -people relationship, that it functions in the best possible atmosphere. And this is why a few months ago, my brother was here in the Gambia to meet with His Excellency, and the President wanted to know when we plan to hold this Joint Commission session. And I tried to explain that because foreign ministers are so busy, you know, with all sorts of matters of state, that we had planned to meet sometime in November, to which he responded very quickly, I might add, but why wait until November? Why can't you hold it right away? <laughs> so we got our marking orders, and this is why we are holding this session at this time. Foreign Affairs Minister Susan Wafo Ogo at the opening of the sixth session of the Joint Commission between the Government of the Republic of the Gambia and the Government of the Republic of Senegal. Kobe continues the search for 40 unaccounted people lost after a fiery train disaster. And Egypt's political crisis deepens. We'll be looking at the partition shaping Egypt's new political outlook in just a moment.
Strategic Ghana's leading ICT company, Assemblers of Mobile Phones and Computers, is now in the Gambia too. We are happy to bring our services to the people of Gambia and look forward to lasting relationship with the state and its people. Come choose from our reduced range of phones and computers and enjoy delightful after-sales service and the confidence of warranties that will keep your devices good as new. Visit ROG at 62 Caraba Avenue, Circular KSMD, opposite the Pipeline Mask, or check out ROGGambia.com for more information. RLG, probably yours. It's been five days since Egypt's military ousted Mohamed Morsi, and the country continues to see demonstrations both for and against the former president. Senator Ben Widerman has this look at the divisions. It's a battle being played out in the streets, opposing demonstrations where the only common element is passionate conviction. We are the right and they are the wrong. They have to know that and have all the world to know that we're not a terrorist at all. We're not a terrorist. We are just here to, to save the Al Tahrir Square, just here to, to, to protest against a terrorist regime. Hatred for the Muslim Brotherhood, called simply the Ikhwan, runs deep amongst Morsi's opponents, as does anger at the United States for its perceived ambivalence over his ouster. The Ikhwan are trying to get into the Hir Square. They are using weapons. They are killing people. And uh, we are on, on the edge of a civil war because of the U.S. support to Ikhwan and because of the U.S. support to terrorism. What's going on now is that we had peaceful protests for more than four days to oust the president, the fascist president of the fascist group of MB. The passion mirrored on the other side. Where no one is going to take our vote. This is a le legitimate elections. The legitimate All election. the people have, have approved its legitimacy. He's our legitimate president. How can he take this from us? He is a legal president. And these are our people. They are also Egyptians. Huge numbers turned out over the last week, demanding, then celebrating the ouster of Mohamed Morsi. But the powerful Muslim Brotherhood isn't taking it lying down. For more than 80 years, the Muslim Brotherhood struggled under successive regimes. Its members pursued, persecuted, and imprisoned. Now, for one year, they had a taste of power, and they've lost it. But they're not about to go quietly into the night. Both sides digging in, there seems little room for compromise. Either heaven or to die in the here. For one Morsi supporter, the choice is stark. <laughs> Either democracy or Taliban, he says. <laughs> the message, either the ballot box or the bullet. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Cairo. Egypt's political crisis has deepened and efforts to form an interim government have stalled, with the conservative al nuwa party pulling out of negotiations after Monday's classes. Meantime, 40 people are still unaccounted for after a train carrying crude oil derailed, crashed and exploded Saturday morning in Canada. At least five people were killed. It happened in the small town of Lac Megantic in the province of Quebec. The explosion leveled dozens of homes and buildings, and as we hear from this report, Officials are warning that some of the missing may never be found. Too many, there was simply no escape. The inferno so intense it incinerated everything in its path. Minutes before, the unmanned runaway train pulling 72 tankers filled with crude oil went careening into the town of Lac Megantic, derailed with unimaginable consequences. Earth-shaking explosions followed, the fire burning for a full 36 hours. The devastation was apocalyptic, the silence ominous. There was no word of sons and daughters who never made it home, friends and family that, yes, vanished. Town officials say some were likely vaporized by the sheer intensity of the blaze. Of course, uh, we are working hand-in-hand -hand with the coroner's office and uh, with the uh, victim unit from Sotheby's Quebec to uh, uh, talk with the families. All of the bodies were transported to the uh, uh, Montreal uh, forensics to be expertised. The fire utterly consumed the very heart of this town in every way. Waiting for word of the missing has been excruciating. We're numb. 
Yeah, we're just numb. In Louisville. I have no news from my friends, she says. I haven't heard from any of them. I can't say more than that. We're waiting for confirmation. We're waiting. Canada's Prime Minister Stephen Harper toured the devastation and foreshadowed the grim news that is sure to come. But I know there is going to be waves of emotion over the next few weeks as the 